how you feeling today? He was like, I feel good. I feel da da da. And I was like, yeah, I heard you was working with KJ. What was that like? He was like, man, KJ is like, you know, what's what's his name? Bumdini from from uh, Ali. Float like a butterfly, sting like a bee. <laughs> and I was like, I'm laughing in the background. I'm like, oh my God, this is good. And then I was like, Mm-mm, but say that other thing you said earlier. He was like, oh yeah, yeah, you know, KJ, you know, you bring a lot of people think that they're in the in the space just to work, but you bring the soul out. You bring the spirit out. We are there to bring the soul out of the performance. Yeah. And I was like. Done. I sent the video to my boy Sean so quick because I didn't know if I was going to trip and the phone was going to fall, so fall down the suit. Anything could fall on the train. I was like, this right here is the resume for life. We ready? All right, there we go. He's like, that's not good for sound. No, okay. I'm with it. All right, here we go. Welcome to Profits and Process. I'm your host, Ryan Grant. And today's guest, how do I describe this woman? Uh, well, it's clear. She is a badass performance coach. And... I think that's somewhat limiting. And the reason why is because it doesn't speak to, in my opinion, everything she's accomplished beforehand and how it's all encompassing. Uh, She's an author, she's a singer, she's most importantly an artist. And I'm super grateful, super thankful to be able to share space and learn from this woman. So I'd like to welcome KJ Rose. Um, I hope that did justice. That was great. That was good. Um, We just found out that we have. Yeah. Shout out to Sing. Yeah, real connection. Shouts to Sing. Now I can stay a little longer and I don't yeah, feel like I'll the, the be taken away. The conversation is a lot softer now because now we are, she actually... I, like, I got to leave. Yeah, she was like, she, uh, N- Nelly said, you have a hard stop. Now she's like, no, well, if it's good, we, you know, I can stay a little longer. <laughs> See what happens when you know people, connect with people so that you can actually have those type of situations happen. Connectivity. Um, even though I said what you do, Yeah. my first question if you've watched, has always been with my guest is, yeah. what do you do? Tell the audience, what do you do? Mm-hmm. I help put and push artists of all mediums beyond their perceived capacity. If they bench in 75, I'm trying to take them to 150. There you go. I am a solid rocket booster, so I soar with them course correct until it's time for me to break away. My sweet spot is that I get you out of the blocks from a very cold start and then I pass the baton. I always run the first leg and then I pass the baton. So I really reintroduce artists to their dopeness. I don't give them anything that they don't already possess. I just irritate, agitate. I am the irritant to help them to find their personal star power. Isn't that exhausting sometimes? Uh (laughs) Uh-huh. Yeah, because they harness your energy and your perspective until they can find their own. Yeah. Um, But I love it because I'm also an artist. Like, I I speak their language. If I didn't know what it felt like to perform in front of thousands, it would be very tough for me to share with them how to do it. So I'm learning now to take quick, short breaths to recover myself, because I, I can never really take the same uh, conversation or lesson plan that I did, you know, the day before into the next one. Everybody requires when I walk in the door, I got to release the ego. Yeah, I got to yeah. give new space, extend new grace. And sometimes I got to just like leave my own lesson plan at the door because that I don't know what call they took before exactly. yeah. they came to me and, and what mood they're in. So it's I never. Um, meet them where they are energy wise. I always require them to rise up to mine. So I'm, I'm never just taking your temperature. Okay, I'm aware of where you are. That's interesting. Yeah. I don't wait to assess the energy in the room. I always bring my own. 
That's a standard. It's the cost of injury. There you go. Where does that come from? Um, I think growing up, you know, I would hear a lot. Now, I've been in all the ensembles. I've been in the choir. I've been on the pom-pom squad. My mom was a cheerleading coach, so she was really my first hype coach. Um, but whenever I was asked to do a solo or to, to do a speech as an orator, I had the worst stage fright. And so it became about repetition for me. Like, I can't, you know, like, and then it became protecting my energy too and protecting knowing that I got this, right? And not listening and allowing other people's thoughts and perspectives yeah. to penetrate that. And so the same thing that I push upon them when I walk in the room is the same thing that I just, you know, make sure that I'm walking in as well. Um, so mm. I think it was just being young and having this stage fright, it just... <laughs> It added to, is this what you wanted to do? I didn't know I would land here. Yeah. I thought I was gonna sing for the rest of my life. Okay. I didn't know that I actually had more than one gift. Yeah. You know, cause I think when you work for so long at one thing, as you know, right? Yeah, You're yeah. like, this is it. This is what I'm supposed to be doing. So you will force things that are not even supposed mm -hmm. to be. And I remember working for Clive Davis, uh, Jay Records. I well, had just I come. Bring that up. Okay, I have good, <laughs> continue. I, I have questions about that. Yeah, I just come off the road. I think I was on the road um, as doing promo dates with Janet Jackson. I was like, okay, this is great, but I don't want my career to be predicated on when other people work, you know, because regardless, mm -hmm. they're still dictating. Uh, but lovely experiences, enjoyed working with everybody. Um, but when I looked up, I was like, okay, you know, even working for Clive, like every day, it was just even pulling those oak doors open and seeing him at the end was so intimidating. Okay. You know, and so it began kind of like this process of projection, of building confidence. And so when they called to say, uh, a woman named Carolyn Williams called and said, uh, we love what you do, can you coach some of our artists in the space of stage presence. Now I was hoping they wanted to give me a record deal. Yeah. Right? Uh-huh. But that's not what they was calling for. And so in that moment I had to kind of declare to myself that one did not preclude the other and I wasn't doing performance coaching because or in lieu of not, not you know yeah. being a, this artist and so I had to declare that for myself because some people would be like oh man you know some of my uh, clients parents would be you're so good why didn't you make it and that would just hit me in the gut and I, I mean the first couple of times I was like I didn't make it all right I <laughs> And then I had to declare the next time somebody said, I said, I made it, you did, missed it. Yeah. You just missed it. And so once I realized that, then it made space for me to not only be this vocal artist, but this performance director. Yeah, was, was there something, a catalyst? Did anything happen that was the trigger for you to be able to find that perspective? Because it's really, it's a beautiful thing. And that's actually finding Profits and pro that's finding the value, finding the jewels yeah. within that where somebody else might not see it right. and you see the perspective. Because for them, they said, oh, you didn't make it. And it's like, well, no, actually, I did. Let me yeah. let me walk you through why. I don't feel like it, but let me right, walk right, you right. through why. And but it's not it's not the easiest and it doesn't always necessarily happen for everybody to see an opportunity in perspective that right. will then change your entire scope. Yeah. Of how you see yourself, most importantly, and yeah. then how you see the world that you walk in. Right. So what was there anything specifically? Yeah, um, I think there were two things. Uh, number one, I was singing background. I mean, my first professional gig came from Heavy D, you know, singing background. A song called Big Daddy with him. And then uh, that was D.O., Tony Doe Fat. And then um, t uh, d Derek, d uh, Derek Angeletti called me to work on Big. So I've been doing all of this background yeah. work in the studios. Um, with you know all of my my rappers and so I was like I am a rapper but anyway so I was like I could do this I was like I am hip hop so it was like AZ Word. you know and um, I'm gonna date myself so I started when I was ten um, uh, Dead Prez yeah and so that was like kind of the first building block of confidence of first of hearing my song on the radio for the first time. I can't imagine. Big Daddy, that, like yeah, driving down the West Side Highway with my soror, Indy Brown, and Dave Nelson, um, my manager, rest his soul. Um, and then on Hot 97, hearing Heavy D, like that for me, I was like, oh, I made it. I made it already. If I don't do another yeah, yeah, thing, yeah, 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 yeah. because for me, I had already surpassed where I thought I would go. You know, I was born in Chicago 
And while I was, you know, musical there in the Soul Children of Chicago, Trinity United Church of Christ, um, I still did not think that I could make a career out of performing. Number one, I just felt like the ones that were doing it were so far out of my reach. Yeah. You know, Chicago is more pragmatic. You know, I didn't grow up in New York where I saw people on Broadway or in L.A. on TV. So I was just like, I'll be in the business yeah. of music, you know? I don't think enough people, I don't mean to cut you off, but I don't think enough people really do understand that about, especially Chicago and the culture of Chicago being very tight knit. Yeah. In relation to very supportive within. Yep. Almost insulated. Mm hmm. Uh, and I didn't even know that initially. Now I'm becoming more familiar with uh, Chicago in relation to that the culture of the city. And I think it's a lovely thing. It's it's beautiful. This is why Chicago really they fuck with Spoke their to own. You. Yeah, they speak. To, they, yeah. they they fuck with their own. Yeah. And they don't really necessarily care or decide like about being yeah, so to find people that decide to step out and look for an opportunity. It's natural to under it's to hear that perspective of like. Yeah, I didn't, you know, there's such a disconnect in yeah. between seeing maybe the New York industry or the LA industry in regards to that. So um, I just wanted to yeah. basically co-sign that. Yeah, I mean, look, and shout out to all the, the producers out of Chicago. My brother Jackson, No ID, you know, did songs on my album, yeah, sure. Vern, Extreme, Andy C. So it, I mean, every time when that song came on, I would hit... Uh, any club and the DJ would be like, we got KJ Rose. From, well, I wasn't even KJ Rose then. I mean, we can talk about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was still Kiana Henson. And so they would play Heavy D. I mean, I had this one song, but you you would think I had a whole album. So they loved on me. And that was Mark Full of Flavor, just like the DJs um, in Chicago on GCI. Yeah. So they, they always show love. You quickly referenced that you weren't even KJ Rose at that time. You know, in your book, you spoke about how that identification had to change in relation to how you saw yourself and how other people saw you. Yeah. Can you expand on that? Yeah. Um, I was, I mean, Rose is my middle name. It's Kiana Rose yeah. Henson. And Which I remember- Which is a whole other thing. I, I, Rose <laughs> thing is crazy because every woman in your entire damn family- <laughs> Rosa, Rose, we rising, so we have risen. So clearly that is it. And I'm yes. glad that you, you own that. Finally. And you have taken that in regards to like embracing that because there's so much power in that and what you do with it is really yeah. awesome. Yeah, and I think, you know, I would tell my mom, like, that name sounds so old. Like, why would you name me Rose? She's like, that was gonna be your first name. I was like, mm. <laughs> And so, um, you know, just for the longest time, even after uh, my background uh, singing career, I would go in for meetings because I've been working on an album probably for 10 years, you know, just asking other people to validate it, to yeah. say I was good enough to actually put it out. And um, they would always say, oh, Kiana, the background singer. And not that that was a bad moniker. It just did. I didn't want that to be the first thing yeah, they said exactly. because it always kind of kept me in the it back. It frames you. Right. And I was like, it's almost better if for 10 seconds they think I'm somebody else. Just to kind of shift their perspective. They think there's a new excitement yeah. for a, a new artist. And so I was just going through, I was like, okay, well, we'll keep Rose. And at the time I, you know, I had did a bit of marriage, just plan. I did, I was married. And um, and so, you know, it was a different last name. And so the J now stands for joy and just know it'll never be what it was and jamming on the one. Word. So now it's KJ, it. yeah. You, you own it. I like that. I reassigned it, yeah, I had to. You know, and that's, that you took back the power, you recreated, yes. that's alchemy work. Yeah. So I wanted to reference, first off, your book, number one, is yeah. a lot more vulnerable than I thought it would be. I'll be honest with you, I, did, I was actually, I'm wildly impressed with the amount of detail that you're willing to go to yeah. in, in, in that space, because it does speak to, things that might other people that are hardships that we all go through and everything like that, but in your perspective of how to change it. So I appreciate that and how to change how you looked at the experience. Right. Yeah. And I think that's for me, that's one of the most important things in life is like in reference to what we're actually experiencing in our process. Mm -hmm. It's really around like, yeah, but how are we seeing what we're experiencing? Right. What's the lens that we're looking at? What's the community that we're looking at it with? Because what are the people's, you know, what are the people that are surrounding us and what yep. they're saying and what yep. their lens? Uh, and I think that all frames in how we see ourselves and how we actually feel capable to actually continue to go through. Yep. Uh, so to to see that I'm, I was actually like 
wildly impressed and curious around what, yeah, where, where it actually, <laughs> where did it come from to essentially become vulnerable? Yeah, to that. Well, I require it from my artist. And so I'm like, I can't be something. There you go that you know, I'm asking them to do. Um, I can't not be the thing I'm asking them to do. And it wasn't like, this book didn't come about because I was like, I've got so much information, let me just share it. I just felt like God put it on my heart. I have been speaking in Australia and London and Ireland, but I wasn't leaving them with anything. I'm just like, hope it works out, you know, but <laughs> yeah. I had nothing tangible to mm -hmm. leave them with. And so, you know, again, we sun ourselves, like you're not an author, it's like stay in your lane, what are you doing? And I was like, okay, well maybe just psych myself out and I'll just write something every day and we'll see what happens. And I knew God said, I need you to write a book. And I'm like, no, but I'm gonna raise you a guide. I'm gonna do a guide to delivering the performance of your life. So there are 400 printed books that were sent to Amazon because I was speaking at Amazon right before COVID that say the Rose Effect, a guide to delivering the performance of your life. And then, you know, my uh, friends Shaka and Adrian yeah. were like, why can't you just put steps to it. And I'm like, cause that means if it doesn't go down, then I'm on the hook. Like yeah, yeah. steps are so, they're so final. Like here are the steps, here's what you here's, do, the yeah, expectation. Here, exactly. But if I give you a guide, I mean, no harm, no foul. Exactly, if yeah. you win, you win. <laughs> it's an insurance, I appreciate it. Yeah, you know what's funny? That's actually very good. You give steps, it's like, well, steps to where? Right, right. There better be something at the end of these steps. Yeah, and initially there were only seven. Yeah. And it was like, the more I lived, like I, you know, I think what I was drawn to before even knowing that I knew your team um, was uh, like speaking about the process because I think that I just want, my presence is to obliterate the process so people could get in flight so they can start. Cause for them, they think it's out of reach. So they won't start. They think that they have to have all the things in order. Yeah. So then they still won't start. So I'm like, no, let me tell you the process. And so um, I remembered we were working with Lil Nas and we had just done the talk Super Bowl, uh, Super Bowl, Super Bowl um, commercial with Taco Bell. And um, I mean, there were just like, it was a, a paradoxical like weekend because I'd left my house, went to Quincy Jones' house, you know, for him to give, present Lil Nas with a, du yeah. a diamond plaque. And then, you know, I'm like, oh, we are winning, come on. Then we took a sprinter, <laughs> then we went to Palm Springs to it. film yeah, the yeah. video. And then I meet like uh, Sam Elliott and Billy Ray and getting little Nas ready. And, and so, you know, the first day was like, it was just new territory for everybody. And then the second day we're like in the trailer dancing. And then my, my landlord calls me and she's like hysterically crying. And she's like, where are you? Because my car was at my house, but my door had been left open all night because my house was robbed. Oh no. And so I was just like, she sent me pictures and I'm like bawling because I stayed in a guest house and um, it was on top of the garage, but the, the main home was being renovated. So there was a gate around it. And I think people just, they needed a quick hit of something. And, um, and so in that moment, like I had to figure out, I hate the idea of losing twice. I right. Did that. Like sometimes you lose once and you just like, okay, I couldn't control it. But why is that? What is it about twice that? Because that I like harder? to maximize the moments, you know? So it's Do you like, feel like you're missing the lesson if you've lost twice. Yeah. Okay. I do. I feel like I, I let emotion take over. Okay. And so while I'm bawling on the side of the desert, I'm watching them take Lil Nas back to set. And I was like, so I could stay here. And I, seemingly I've lost all my stuff, Yeah. but then I lose the moment for no, him to no, have exactly, it and yeah. raise his moment. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Um, because I can't be present for the job I was hired for. So I was in Video Village yelling like, you got this, tears still streaming down, hat on shade, like, oh, you can do this. And I was going through my own moment. So what everybody saw after that was my participation yeah. in the, the commercial but they didn't know what happened before. And so I'm like, no, like it's about recovering quick because yeah. you'll miss the next moment. Yeah, you potentially it, won't see the opportunity that are right, right in front of yeah, your face yeah. because of, and it's understandable, but it's, it's really commendable though that you, cause that's a level of fortitude in self and you know. Delta Sigma Theta, thank you, so there you go. for the fortitude. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's impressive because it is easy to actually 
sulk or just sit in your space yeah. of what you're going through because life is life. Right. That's a and I don't think it's it's such a prime example of you being at this high and then somebody saying, Oh yeah, let me pull you back down. Let yep. me show you something yep. else. And for you to be able to take that, transform that energy of sadness, pain, disgust, anger into really service. Oh because you essentially That's what it is. Looked outside of yourself yeah. and said what do I have an opportunity to do? Somebody is in a position that he's created. I've been a part of. I'm yeah. on this journey with him. Let me literally take this, transform this energy into just be all about this. Yeah. It's a beautiful thing. And I actually think that it changes. I have no data for this. So like, whatever. But I don't care. I do. I'm the data for this. You so. are the data. Say it. It changes something inside of you when you do that energetically. It changes your cells. It actually makes you healthier you know i do yeah. actually believe that it's and now we're talking a whole nother shit in regards come on, to like, let me that's get part come, of the, like that's on. actually part of the magic when people talk about what our power is and like yeah. in in relation to your your power to actually heal your power to actually transform something to create something and life occurs like life happens yeah and we don't have power over a lot of the things. I'd say most of the things that, but what we do have control over is our expression, mm -hmm. our perspective, and how we react to certain things. Mm -hmm. And yes, you don't necessarily, you might not be equipped. We're not all equipped in certain ways uh, to handle certain things right. in the manner in which we, but this is why we have people like you. Yeah. Because that's what you're doing. You're yeah. actually getting people to get out their own way, to see themselves in a manner in which maybe they do, but maybe not to the extent that you yeah, do. Yeah. And I think it's a very beautiful thing because for me, seeing somebody step into their power and seeing somebody walk with a level of light, and I say that seeing somebody see the God in themselves is yes. the most attractive and best thing that you can Amen. see when you see somebody, especially somebody that you care about and you value. Yeah. It's, yeah. Isn't that like, oh my goodness. It's, yeah. I mean, the eighth chapter, so it was, there were only seven, and the eighth chapter, it's funny you mentioned power, became the power of the push through. And it became a tool, you know, and that's the thing. I think it's like the track record. Number one, if you look at God's track record, then every time you're just like, okay, you know, I got this, it's bigger than me. <laughs> and go. then if you just look at the track record of when you push through, the results on the other side of pushing through. And so I didn't realize that that, that chapter would be a tool for people, you know, if I could push through, then they're like, okay, it's more palatable for me to yeah. also do the same thing. And so, you know, I remember Lil Nas read the chapter. He was like, I didn't even know that was happening to you, you know? And so I think, you know, it, it emboldened him yeah, in, a, in a way as well. It just showed him, it's like, oh no, what, she did this? Damn, okay, well, I don't have an excuse when X, Y, and Z yeah. necessarily. I really appreciate individuals who are quote unquote, behind the scenes, helping those who are in front of. Yeah. And, and the faces, whether it be the quote unquote stars and whatever it may be. And the reason why is because I know that talent is hard. <laughs> <laughs> it's the labels idea for me to be there. So people, initially I would say, uh, equate my presence with something is wrong with them and oh, the way okay. that they've been doing it. Right? Yeah, yeah, and yeah, so yeah, I'm yeah. like, no, you're already winning. If I'm in the room, that means that's they're investing yeah, 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 yeah. They, in you. That's you know? a good perspective. I didn't think about that. Yeah. yeah so they it's, might, there, so is, there, is there some time pushback? Yeah. Yeah. And I'm like. Yeah, immediately right away with, yeah, yeah, it's like, what do you mean? I'm here. So why, why do I right. need you? No, I like And that. I'd be like, man, um, hey, do you know why I'm here? They'd be like, I mean, I think, you know, for performance or something, I was like, oh, okay, cool. I said, you want to run it? No, nah, I'm good. I was like, okay, cool, cool, cool. I said, um, well, I was looking at your performance and when you get to like three minutes and 27 seconds, it looks like you check out. So do you check out on purpose? Do you even, are you aware that you check out? And if you are, then, I mean, that's a choice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then we could go. And he was like, I mean, I guess we could do something on the second verse. I was like, cool, I'll take what I can get. Like, I'm yeah, not going to yeah, yeah, yeah. force myself on it. You know, then I have other artists that I work with from Chicago. And I'm like, I know where you come from, yeah. you know, and, you know, 50 percent of your friends might not make it to this point in life in their dreams. You've already won. 
That is my motto. Did you know that was hot? I be saying that. I be saying oh, that. I, you've already won. Yeah. Like that's how I walk in the room. Like right. I'm already winning. I'm just offering you a piece of the win. Right. That's it. Yeah. And so for them, I'm like, look, you know, I try to like this one artist was like, well, you know, I can only be here for like an hour. I'm like, but I got you for two. He was like, well, I got to go shop for my showcase. I was like, oh, the showcase that they're trying to figure out if they're going to keep you. I was like, I mean, I'm just saying, I think you should just go on and invest in this. And so, you know, it's like I try to like I come from a I'm serving here. It's not about my ego. Yeah. You know, I just know if you have the opportunity that you should take advantage of it. And I never treat clients as just kind of like part of like you know, the process or like the number. I always feel like I'm assigned to them in some way, mm -hmm. you know? And so I remember I had like these guys, I mean, the cussing factor. I mean, I was hearing cuss words <laughs> and you know, just the way they referred to women. I was like, at the step, I was like, Lord, I don't know what you want me to do in this room. Please make it plain. And so, um, you know, I left, and then the next day I came back in and I just had a different perspective. And I remember my mom was like, you know, do you think that you're like perpetuating some of these things by being in the room and hearing that? And I was like, I can't change the room if I'm not in the room. I can't give them a perspective yeah, of what a, lady, yeah. what a lady looks like. And then they can choose as many bitches as they want, but maybe they'll choose one less bitch because they were like, you know what? I want to be a little bit more respectful in that way. And I, I remember coming back and, and watching, because it was at least like, you know, four or five guys that were with the artists. And I realized that each of their kind of dreams and their possibilities were connected to this artist winning. Of course, absolutely. And so I was like, okay, I kind of need them to stay in the room. I, I want to feed them in some way. And, you know, I remember they were like uh, whispering behind me and I, I ended up being like the, the young aunt. So I'm like, what is it? They were like, you know, no, no disrespect, ma'am. I just wanted to, you know, uh, say we like when our boy, you know, moves like this. And I'm like, note it. And they were like, all right, you know, we shouldn't have said that. You know, so it's just such, you know, and then I asked, I'm like. You empowered them to make me yeah. not feel like, you know. Yeah. And I, clearly you know what you're doing in reference to a team. And you said something early on about saying you're a part of the rocket ship. Yeah. And I was gonna ask if you, within your process, do you work from an isolated place, like one-to-one, -one, or are you taking feedback from the entire team? And you clearly talked about that. When you're referencing, when you look at uh, a client that you work with, an artist, is it really a collective around like, okay guys, this is what we're trying to do? Yeah. Are you, are you hearing perspective from all the people that are yeah. in his crew or in his, like or that are part of the team yeah. to essentially build you know the best representation because there might be aspects that you're not familiar with that even the artist isn't familiar with that someone his his team is is like yeah yeah I've known this person since so and so and I do know this, this. is That's what like, yo all to me adds are you doing that yeah because I, I really and it's interesting I've been on both sides of it I've been on the side as the performance director giving you know perspective and. Um, you know, sometimes people are like, you know, like my my word is is gold. You know, why would we? And then they oftentimes don't understand my role in the space, right? Because it's like I always say, vocal coaches deal with the instrument. As a performance director, I do with behavior. Yeah. The choreographers um, give you eight counts. A lot of choreographers are also performance directors as well. And I just say for myself, I am I am very clear that I make your eight count count. I know this. You know, because you can be given movement, but if it don't tell no story, if yeah. it don't penetrate the lens, then we just saw you moved well. And then we ain't leave with nothing, Word. but like a five, six, seven, eight, I need more, you know? And so I think, um, you know, finding that people are not willing to, to hear my perspective in rooms, you know, makes me more open in rooms with other artists and their team to hear what they have to say. Like, I got it. And at the end of the day, I don't care where the information comes from. If it's to elevate this artist, then that's who's winning. Exactly. Right. Yeah, yeah. Because then that then you're operating an ego and what you would be like, you know, and so what you would do. Um, and so I another point um that uh comes to mind is if I did not reconcile that um I can be this vocal artist and this performance artist, um, performance director, then I would be a bitter coach because it would be more what I think you should be doing. You know, it you know, if I were you. 
as opposed to leaning into who so are you? Are, yes, what I, are you bringing? What the heck is the Old Town Road? Where is it going? Why we care? Why you care? You know, so it's really digging into um, how they see themselves. And, yeah. and one of my processes, is that a thing? Is stripping music, stripping, um, you know, cadence, and just saying, just recite the words because they're conversations long before they became songs. Exactly. You know, so what are you saying? And what is it that you want to land? And are you making every lyric count, every word count? Is this, can we put punctuation at the end of what you're saying? Did you mean to say this as an exclamation point? Did you mean to say it as a period? Cause now you done dropped off. Is this an ellipsis? Are you gonna continue on? <laughs> you know, so it's like, That's if it's impressive. a question, okay. ask me the question. And so I've had moments where I've stripped all those things from an artist and then they cried, right? Because now it's them hearing themselves so, say yeah. these words and then them trying to figure out what what do I agree with? What did I subscribe to that really wasn't my voice in the first place? Has it ever 180 something? Like yeah. 180 the project where you're like, actually, I don't, I don't care. No, about not to that degree. Okay. You know? um, but in terms of how an artist showed up, like I, I would, a yeah, no I, to I would, a would, yes. Yes. No, I'm absolutely. not trying to do this show. To literally understanding, like you know what? No, I get it. To, and and to, owning it. And yeah. To sitting on the curb, you know. And a lot of my work, you know, doesn't take place on the stage. Some of my work takes place on the curb, you know, where it's like, I can see the artist is, is kind of tormented by this, like, you know, and as an artist, I know when to, to push more and then I know when to back off, you know? And um, I remember sitting on the curb and saying, you know, like anybody can do a show when all the circumstances are aligned, yeah. but it reveals somebody's heart when they can do it and they're not aligned. And I remember saying, and, and this that's, is for me. That's greatness. Yeah, that is greatness. That's the expression of yeah, greatness. And yeah. maybe not in the younger generation, but the ability well, we don't to, get them, though. The ability we don't get to them. perform under pressure. Mm -hmm. Make uh, the best of it. Yeah. Recover quick. Capabilities, mm -hmm. capacity. That is by definition greatness because yeah, it's one thing to perform when things are Everybody winning. You know, things are smooth sailing, everything like yep. that. But when you have to pull from the bottom, from the gut. That's the stretch. You know, and I appreciate you hearing for, you know, what I heard in you, you speaking around from the curb. Is so many people think that like a performance coach is, well, no, they're helping the, the details of what happens during the day, the, the, the performance itself. It's like, no, most of the work is done behind the scenes. Yeah. Yeah. So that you, so that can happen. Because they're gonna do that regardless. It's like it's all the other shit. And you're, I, you know, to some degree, you're probably their therapist in moments. You're probably their confidant in moments. Mm -hmm. You are probably their friend. You're probably their mother in moments. Yeah. You're probably the auntie in moments. Yeah. Uh, you're probably a, a great reflection for them. And they probably don't want to hear from you in moments. <laughs> And I got to know when to like, yeah, you know, that's part of your process, what artists you know what I mean? like. Exactly. Yeah. Knowing how to navigate that and when to be like, yo, shit, can't I'm good. shut up right now. Like now, right. right now. Yeah. And then not take it personally. Yeah. Right. And so, you know, I remember like the artist kind of went rogue and I followed behind him and he was like, you know, I just need a moment. I'm like, okay, cool. This, this ain't How it. does that for you? Because now this isn't personal and you, you become... You're in this and you see what you're doing and you see yeah. how you're helping. What are some of the things that you do in your process to actually decompress, bring yourself back down right. so you don't become caught up in the identification of your clients? Man. Right. That's good. Um, not caught into the identification of your clients. You're so right because it's an emotional contract and it's a perpetual state of engagement and disengagement. And that can wear on your spirit. And I think, you know, it took, you know, probably leaning in so much um, to an artist to recalibrate me and to understand that I was winning before them, I was doing this. Um, they did stretch me. There were so many great wins that we experienced together, but it's an assignment. Yeah. And when that assignment is over, oh, you got to yeah. get in your car like Della Reese and go to the next one and, and, and not to hold on so tight that God can't get in and say, hey, time's up. Because you're really just a vessel, exactly. right? And so sometimes you can stay in spaces longer than God intended um, 
you know, for your own, you know, insecurity or just, you just, you know, you didn't, you got the lesson and you stayed beyond the lesson and then it becomes diminishing return. And it can become unhealthy. And unhealthy. And you're like... You can have an unhealthy relationship with anything. Right. Um, and then you miss the next... Lose twice. You done stayed longer. <laughs> you miss the next opportunity. Yeah. And so, yeah, so now I'm learning. Like, okay, my work here is done. This wasn't about me. You know, and I think when you take the ego out of it, you realize that, you know, you are just a vessel in the space. You're in the service business. And now maybe somebody else can use it. I'd like to get into some of the like specific details and not okay. to give away all your game, but what are some of the things in re relation to your personal practice that you do yeah. then that you essentially um, give to your clients as well to help realign, reinforce? Yeah. Um, like some standard things are that I take them outside of the thing we're there to work on. So um, I give them different scenarios. You know, let's take this song and let's act as if we're being chased by birds while you're singing it. Um, let's take this song, act like you are a one man, you know, actor in the, on this stage and you've got to project in all areas. So it's, what happens is they begin to see the, the, the piece of art in a different way. Hmm. They don't just like, you know, spit it out as if they've done it, you know, time and time again. But it shows me how they stretch physically in the way that they tell the story, how their expressions are able to kind of have a little bit of variety. Um, and it helps them become more vulnerable, you know? And I'm like always digging in, like, why'd you write this song? You know, why do you care about this song? Um, what is the lyric? And so we, sometimes we go through lyrics, we underline the things that you wanna give weight to and movement yeah. to. Uh, we put punctuation in there. Um, and I am a huge um, advocate of, I wanna see what you're able to do when there's no sound. Like the first two roles, I need you to perform like everybody is hearing impaired. All they can do is see you. Do I still feel included in the song? Do I feel like you talking to me? You know, the next two roles are visually impaired. Did you let some ad libs go to waste? You know, why did that lyric drop off? You didn't mean this one the way you said this one. Yeah. So it's like moments like that, that I'll like, you know, put them on the other side of the room and I'll just watch them do a window. And I'm like, why your first verse look like your second verse? You know what I'm saying? Why was there no elevation? Why didn't it mm -hmm. seem like a progression? And so, you know, I just love when I'm able to like fully uh, work in the beast hood of the Rose Effect. And one artist that allowed me to do that, um, in addition to Lil Nas, was uh, Nas. I got the Nas's on line. I got the Nas on line. <laughs> <Nas on. laughs> <laughs> and so I remember, so when I first met Nas, it was because he was doing the Grammys with Lil Nas. And, yeah. and I remember like, you know, the first, Five minutes, I was like, oh my God, I mean, this is this is the legend, this is happening. And then I was like, get yourself together. We got yeah. work to do. And so I remember like I was, Nas and Lil Nas were like on the, um, they were on the speaker and they were going up and down and I pushed Nas down. And Lil Nas was like, KJ, be easy. And I was like, I know what I'm doing. I got this. Right. And so I told him, I was like, I asked Nas, I was like, you good with me just kind of doing what I do? He's like, yeah, yeah, I'm good. And so um, after that, I remember walking into a uh, Slick Rick Grammy party, and Nas was sitting there with D-Nice and Swizz, and Nas was like, yo, KJ, I need you. I got my show coming up at the Garden. It was his first time ever headlining. Oh, shit. Right. And so, um, uh, you know, this was, I think it was transformational for me in that he said he wanted to work with me. And then when I took it to the team, they were like, we ain't got it in the budget. And I was like, but the man said, the man, yeah. right? And so as a performance director, my job is really to always protect the artist. I am an advocate for the artist. My job is to yeah. handle them with care. So I can't then use it for my own, you know, come up, right? I can't be like, Nas, they said, I mean, I'm not trying to yeah, stress it's not about that. You're not trying to add to Right. And create maybe a possible division or anything like right. that. Right. So I just got to be like, that's what he said, though. He said it to me on this date. And so, you know, I was kind of like. That's a very aware thing to do. I don't mean to cut you my off. My God. That's a very aware thing to do. And it's, it's a very protective thing to do. 
it's hard, but it, it keeps you accountable to yourself and accountable to the work, you yeah. know? And so I remember, um, you know, saying I, I went hiking. I went to Fryman because it always gives me clarity. And I'm like walking. I was like, Lord, I mean, it's just, I mean, the man asked for help. How do we get here? I mean, this is like a monumental, colossal no. And then I remember God saying, I never said no. And I was like, mm, what does that mean? And so I went to text back management and I said, you know, guys, let's, just let me come to rehearsal. You know, because I just said, if this man asked for help, you're still in the service business. Yeah, exactly. You know, you made it about the budget. They you say gotta, we ain't you got it. You figure out a way. Yeah, you can figure out a way. Figure out a way to help the man that said yeah. he needed help. Because you never know what conversations are happening mm -hmm. when you're not there. So I don't know if they said she ain't available. And he had to just be like, all right, let me just do what I do. And so I was like, hey, guys, let me just come to rehearsal. And they didn't respond. I was like, you mean I can't get us away? And so I was like, oh, okay, okay, stay calm. And so they finally hit me. They said, can you come to rehearsal? I was like, okay. And um, and I remember getting there and and I was like, yo, you know, I just want to make sure that the show looks good. And I was like, all right, let's, let's do the show. And I'm getting excited. The band is fire. The song's are fire. And afterwards, he was like, you got some notes for me? And it's like, I whipped out a scroll. I was like, <laughs> do I? I was like, I got notes. And so it was like, I, every ounce of my body was just engaged in this moment. You and I was up. like, you, you my up. God. I was like, oh, we, we doing it. I said, number one, you the only messenger we got. If you ain't singing these songs like you're doing it for the first time, then we don't get the message. It's a conversation before it's a song. What are you saying? Why it, one mic shouldn't look like if I rule the world? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, they should in your performance. Yeah. It's a you're telling different stories, but you've been telling these stories for years. I need you to tell them like it's the first time you're doing it, and I need you. I need energy to abound in the room. You need to be telling them to everybody in the room, to the people in row ZZ. They need to feel it. And then I was like, and we ain't just walking back and forth for transportation. We only walking if we pushing the narrative forward. There we go. And he was like, all right, all right. And I was like, I think it said something else. I was like, um, uh, uh, I said, I can't remember what else I said, but he was like, all right, KJ, all right, let's, let, me, let me write some notes down, you know? And so that moment, you know, ended up allowing me to go to New York to the show. And, um, you know, I remember saying I was very, uh, intentional about hearing his experience of me, right? Not leaving it to chance. Yeah. Sometimes I'm I'm in a space when someone is like sharing how they see me, and I'll be like, "Well, no, I'm actually not a coach. I'm a performance director. I've okay. I've moved up. I've given Wonderful. myself. Like you see what I'm saying? I've given myself uh, a promotion. I want to come back to that too. Um, but just to hear like his experience with me. So I was like, you know, I tried to, it's a very fine line because you don't want to seem like, you know, you're like fanning out. You want to seem very professional, but you want to leave with something yeah. like a testimonial. You know, I don't want just a picture because that, that don't tell me nothing. And so, you know, he had called me to make him some tea. Now, I'm a good tea maker. Like Lil Nas say, I make the best tea ever. Nas say, I make the best tea ever. I do some good tea. So I made him some tea. And he was like um, getting his hair cut and, you know, he had said something, you know, he was like, KJ, you know, you like, you bring the spirit and the soul out of this thing. And, and I was like, oh my God. And so I really wanted to whip out my camera, but it was not the right time. He yeah, was getting, yeah. I was like, oh, but when I, I just need to create this moment again. And so in a moment where I felt like he was a little bit more relaxed, not too close to the show, I was like, well, where's your, where's your content team? And he was like, I mean, they, they probably on their way. I was like, in the meantime, how you feeling today? He was like, I feel good. I feel da da da. And I was like, Yeah, I heard you was working with KJ. What was that like? He was like, Man, KJ is like, you know, what's what's his name? Boomdini from from uh, Ali. Float like a butterfly, sting like a bee. <laughs> and I was like, I'm laughing in the background. I'm like, Oh my God, this is good. And then I was like, mm -mm, But say that other thing you said earlier. He was like, Oh yeah, yeah. You know, KJ. You know, you bring a lot of people think that they're in the in the space just to work, but you bring the soul out, you bring the spirit out. We are there to bring the soul out of the performance. Yeah. And I was like, done. I sent the video to my boy Sean so quick because I didn't know if I was going to trip and the phone was going to fall, so fall down the suit. Anything like, you know, could fall on the train. I was like, this right here <laughs> is the resume for life. And so, yeah. Man.
Where do you see yourself mm. in relation to next phases with not just with this as well yeah. in performance aspect? Where would you like to go? And also where you would want to do something else in relation to using this? Yeah. Well, I'm in it. I am currently on a show called The Black Hamptons that just released season two on BET Plus. Wonderful. Um, and so I get to be everything that I am in Do that show. Do they allow show. you to actually be? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Shout Sweet. out to Try Destin, Indy Brown, Trey Haley, Carl Weber. Um, and so, yeah, it's uh, that's been a journey to learn um, and expand my craft in that way, you know, and just the yeses. The more I say yes, the better I get as as a director. Um, and then also on a show called The Family Business, it's on Netflix. And so while it's new, you know, it's just I'm I'm exercising a different muscle um, and doing a lot of corporate speaking. So taking that same methodology that I will pour into uh, a Nas and making sure that executives understand their own personal star power. You know what I mean? What are your assets? The specificity of your assets. Like, what are you bringing to yeah. bring as an individual before you try to offer it to the collective? And so it's reigniting kind of um, them as artists. And you'd be amazed when I'm like, how many artists we have in the house? And everybody's like, I mean, I don't I know. Right. how they see themselves. Right? And I'm like, yeah. we're all artists. That means what you do can't be duplicated. Yeah. You know, like what your craft, what you put into it. And so then it's like I ask again I'm like how many hours do we have in the house and they're like duh yeah. so when they begin to see themselves as that then they see what they do is something it's of something value of value and when you feel like what you bring to the table is valuable, yep. you will actually act in a different manner. You do. And I'm like, I don't care how many SVPs are marketing. They don't do it like you do. Yeah. Your experience is specific to the way you move in the space. And so like the corporate speaking has been great. And um, and now, you know, I had done some TV back with uh, Kelly Rowland. I was on the show called Chasing Destiny as a performance director mm -hmm. when I first got to L.A. And I was like, oh, my God, I can make sense in so many different ways. Um, and then I ended up on a show uh, on E! Entertainment called Revenge Body, which is Khloe Kardashian's show as a performance director. And so, you know, it's like it, it reminds me that... Uh, you know, we often think our job is or we get a little frustrated when people can't see us kind of in the vein or as yeah. we are elevating in this thing. And so, you know, I, I remember when Kelly had the show. Well, I saw it in the trades and I was on Stephen Hill because he was president of BET at the time. I was like, yo, I should be on the show. He was like, we got a vocal coach. I was like, good, I'm not that. But they knew me as a singer because I was a BET Music yeah, Matters yeah, yeah. artist, right? And then Frank Gatson, who's a creative director for everybody um, from Beyonce to Destiny's Child to Tyrese to Brandy, um, was like, I remember if I could like attribute besides my family and my brother, like two people on the way up who um, were kind of instrumental in planting seeds, it would be Frank, because I was singing with Carl Thomas, my heart, shot town love you. Um, and I, I believe it was for Soul Train and Frank was working with Tyrese. And Frank came over, he was like, I see something. He was like, you got something. And so, you know, coming from a space where people are saying, why, why you do all that? Why are you, you doing yeah. too much? And then to see somebody say, oh, no, no, but what you do is something. And then Ben Isn't Vereen. it the most beautiful thing when somebody sees you? It is. You'd be like, I oh love God, you. Right? Yeah. Because it is so so much of, especially artists, it's so much yeah. of you have to fight through that where people don't yeah. see you. They don't understand. They can't hear your music. Yeah. And it's not a matter of it's that they can't hear it. Mm -hmm. And that's why I reference like, nah, I just can't hear it. I can't, I don't get it. And it's like, oh, okay, I'm just gonna keep putting. And when you, but you, when you get somebody that says, "No, I yeah. see you," yeah, I see it. Keep pushing, or I see, I see where you go. I see, or, or you know, in that moment where you actually feel like, uh, and you're like, "Nah, don't, yeah. don't go there." Yeah, That's and sometimes I, I can kind of like exist in both spaces of well, you must not be my people. Like, if you don't get it, I ain't supposed to be here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then leave room to say, say like, okay, well. Let me see what else I could yeah, do exactly, yeah. to make you get in. Then if I just get to a point where I'm like, the more I do, it becomes less of me, you know, as opposed to stretching and elevating. Yeah, me. finding balance within yeah. that space. It's like being open to hear yep. the feedback of like, I can't hear this. 
I want to hear it. I can't hear yeah. it. How do you adjust that? Okay, change yeah. some things in relation to like, well, are you actually expressing yourself in a manner true to how you want? Yeah. The same breath, not actually going full force into what someone else. There's, right. there's all that. Right. Um, what do you do in the moments or have there been moments where you don't necessarily feel aligned with your craft, your art, with your process? Mm-hmm. What are some of the things you do? I cry, I hike, you know, I surround myself with like my village, you know, there's a lot of fam ones out here um, in LA. And so I had ground support before moving out here and kind of my barometer has been, if I can't go to your house and just lay on the couch in a ball without you thinking something, you know, I'm acting funny, then I, you probably know our people like word, that, word, word. I you get know, that. so that becomes kind of my metric. Um, and to be able to just be um, in the space where I'm unsure and um, just to have guidance. I also have a spiritual coach. You know, I'm like, this is what happened. And he was like, let's take it to the word, Matthew. And I was like, <laughs> oh man, that's how I was, okay. He was like, oh, did you think that it was gonna stay the same? He was like, "This, you are in the elevation of life. It is time for you, you have been elected, you have been chosen. I was like, yes. So it's like, I allow, I look for ways to be inspired and to be fueled because I always kind of take those moments as I am now reaching a turning point where this thing is becoming uh, even bigger than what I imagine. And it's what I do here. Yeah. Whether I like never leave the house, you know, or decide to just go for a walk. And I've seen the, the effects of, you know, um, having a moment where I'm just like, I don't know what it is. I think, you know, I've been in this game. It took me 10 years to believe I was good enough to be an artist. And, um, and then, you know, just to kind of now be in this space and just say, I mean, this, this feels transactional. It's transactional. What's the next thing? Like, yeah. you know, people are not going to perform the same way. So I'm always looking for new ways to, I don't want to get left behind. So I started taking motion capturing okay, classes. Okay, good. And nobody, I, you're going to leave me. Because when they decide we only going to perform in the metaverse, then I got to. It's so funny. I was going to ask. <laughs> my next question was going to be around what are some things you do that you're unfamiliar with. Yes. To either get out of comfort zones that you have because it makes sense. You, know, yeah. you have a lens and you're good at your, you, you know how to, you have a phenomenal lens mm-hmm. that you see certain things at a really high pace, high, high level. Yeah. But in the same breath, you have blind spots. And so how do you essentially, yeah, what are some of the things you do? And you just spoke to it. It's like, but do you have other people where you ask them, it's like, yo, what are some of the lanes that I maybe should be adding Heck into yeah. my- Heck yeah. Last you know? night I was talking to my boy James McMillan. I was like, I'm gonna give you all the pieces of what I'm working on. And then he was like, okay, I got it. What do you want to do? I was like, I just told you, did I just give you all the pieces? And he was like, well, number one, consistency. <laughs> You know, when did you put the book out? I was like, 2020. He said, why are you not still talking about it? I was like, I did it. He said, you sound like an artist that put out a record that no longer thinks that the record is good enough because you did it. And I was like, fair. I see where you're coming from. Yeah. All right. And then I, um, you know, he just gave me like new ideas on how to like copyright some of my speeches, you know, because um, I'm learning to stay in front of the work. I think, you know, I vacillate between, I mean, yeah, you know, thank you, I'm grateful. And I did this and you gonna know it. So it's like, you know, to be presumptuous that yeah. everybody knows it, as opposed to like still like staying on top of it and staying in front of it. Um, this guy named Byron was like, you know, sometimes it's hard to put an IP on your energy because, you know, you can't, you know, like choreographers can now copyright their work. It's hard to do that yeah, with mine. Yeah, yeah. So he was like, so you've got to stay in front of it and you've got to keep promoting it. And yeah, you have to continue to show people who, and I'm like, man, didn't I show them? And it's like, how, pre- <laughs> how presumptuous of you to think that, you know, you don't have new people that, you know, have now been enticed by what you do and want to learn from what you do. And so, you know, I had a separately, I had a chance to um, work with Lil Nas for his uh, Roblox concert. Yeah. And I was like, okay, the metaverse, all right, we doing something, all right. And then I worked with 24K Golden in his concert, but this time I was in it. And so they put me in a motion capturing suit for the sake of time. So he didn't have to do both uh, characters. And I was like, this surely has to be another check. What is this? And they were like, this is called motion capturing. You're a motion capture artist today. And I was like, huh, 
tell me more. So then I took classes um, and I was like, this is a thing. All right. And most of the people in the classes are actors that are trying to be in, you know, like the av- the next Avatar yeah. movie. I'm just trying to be equipped so that I can give my clients more. Mm-hmm. And so then before I knew it, I was like, I think the next when I think about, you know, the next phase of what I do, it's how does KJ exist in the metaverse as an avatar, you know? And so I just went in the studio the other day and put on the motion capturing suit, just took all the lessons I had learned. And I was like, I don't, they were like, so, you know, what universe do you want to have? And and where do you want this to land? And then who's going to create? I was like, I don't know none of that. All I know is that I want to start. And I figured the first thing I knew what to do was to get in here and to create this using one of my power chants. You know, I've created these like, bite-sized pieces of motivation. Yeah. And I was like, so you tell me, what should I do next? They were like, well, do you want to be uh, animated or do you want to be a real person? I was like, huh, what does your universe look like? And I was like, it's going to be HBCU driven. I need bands. I need, you know, so it's yeah, like, yeah, yeah. It, those are the blind spots. And I'm just like being vulnerable enough to say, I don't know, but I feel that I'm supposed to be in this space in some way. And this is kind of the next kind of metamorphosis of the Rose Effect and how I show up. That's beautiful. Like, actually, it kind of throws me off a little bit. Uh, <laughs> what? Not no, I great. like, um, yeah, shit, hold on. That, that kind of threw okay, me good. off. Okay, good. I'll about, do a yeah, lipstick. Yeah, good. That threw me off a little bit. Because um, I definitely didn't think that. Oh, yeah. You about to. Mm. I did it for BB Rexa, too. And, and Sweetie, you know? Yeah. And, and so when she did the Super Bowl, um, they had me come in. And, you know, a lot of times it is their first time doing yeah, yeah, just yeah, being in this space they're excited but then you realize that the people that have been doing it for years kind of talk at the artists sometimes um it's it's a fine line because you don't want to talk to them like they don't know what's happening and then you don't want to give them information that goes over their heads and so i become kind of a really good kind of um conduit. advocate and conduit yeah. yeah for like no 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 say it say it directly to her or, you know, who wrote this? Yeah. Who wrote that they want somebody to do a booty pop? Like, you know, yeah, and you yeah, see the you mail. I said, so what no, did no, you no, no. Yeah, mean you, by this? You know, so that it, is that's great because you're definitely a you're a cultural bridge, and especially the more you put yourself in different spaces to yeah. have an understanding, you do. You become a conduit and become, like I said, you can articulate mm-hmm. to and for the artist. Yeah. Agreed. In relation to you understand because you have an understanding of their why, and this is why they they would it wouldn't it would make most it would make sense as to why you can get the most out of them, and why they also feel the most comfortable to allow you to do that because you can speak on their behalf. Mm-hmm. And anybody who's in any I don't care coach director anybody that is an an advocate for me or anybody else, if I know that they're willing to speak on my behalf and go to the end of the yeah. world for me, I'll do anything for them. Yep. And so it is. It's Where, trust. Yeah, trust and you ability. It's like, oh, no, I can be myself because I know that my team right. is essentially speaking on my behalf in a healthy way and articulating things and being able to connect things to me. Yeah. That's what you mean. That's the. That's what you want. That's the whole point. Wow. Yeah. I want to actually speak to this space of morality within like what that looks like with you within the industry mm. and you're working with these individuals that are massive and not necessarily all massive but they are they're they're trying to their goal is to ascend and their goal yeah. is to grow in the industry as an artist within their art yep how does the idea of your sense of morals, their sense of morals play a part in the industry that we know that it's not necessarily always the case right I don't know if I've been challenged in that way. And, you know, I don't know if it's just like I come in with a certain spirit. Um, That's beautiful because I think that does. I think that does speak to you. Mm -hmm. Um, Not to say that you have control over all the energies of that space, but to say that you haven't necessarily been challenged with it, I think that does. I think it speaks to what you bring to the table, whether people might immediately understand, right. oh, this is not the person, that, that, you know what I mean? This, right. You know, there's a level of um, respect that you command, there's yeah. a level of uh, 
admiration, whatever it may be. So yeah, right. I appreciate that. Like I've had, you know, artists um, to, and, and initially it was like, oh my God, I feel like so left out. They didn't want to include me. Um, but they've said, you know, I don't think, you know, KJ should be in the room. And I didn't get it at first. And they were just like, nah, I want to try some things. And, you know, I knew that wasn't who you are. And so it. Um, Is that a respect thing? Like, I feel like you, it is. Yeah, exactly. I felt you like it what? was. It's, I actually, I see, I, that's what I took it. And then I, I fight for you even more. Cause I'm like, oh, you see me, you love me, you respect me. I'm down for you. Yeah. And so if people are like, I don't know about, I was like, I, I know what you see, but I know how they handle me. Okay. I don't judge the work. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, I can't tell you to figure out what your story is. And then when you tell it, I'm like, no, that ain't, that ain't yeah, what yeah, I had yeah. in mind. You know? Hmm. So. Um, how important is that? Just what you said, not only as your role in this space, but also your role like as a black woman, as an artist, as a woman, mm -hmm. as a black woman and as an artist for that, because so much of our story, your stories that have, they're not given that, they're not afforded that in relation to being honest about their, telling their story. Right. and being able to express their story yeah. in that space. So how important is it to actually honor that? It's very important because I need to leave there feeling, um, you know, like I, I, I want to leave with pride. Like I don't want to leave feeling like I gave them all I had and I was also depleted of my soul, you know? And so, um, you know, there are moments where I might be the only one in the room, but I'm like, I keep thinking. When you know when you see things, you be like, well, where were they people? How did this happen? Oh, yo, Who man, was I'm in so charge? Glad you say that. Yo, none of their people said, uh. That, that ain't a good idea, you know? Nobody in their team, I, and this is what makes me think that I'm like, all oh, these people don't care about her. They people don't care about her. Yeah. Because I'm like, yo, nobody in their team said, uh, I know you look, but this might not be yeah. the best idea or, ah, uh, you know what? Be mindful of this. Nobody in the team Nobody. Team's so where I may have, you know, discomfort of like, you know, speaking up in a room where it's like, you know, quiet and it's, you know, it's it maybe me and like two other black girls, but we're all outnumbered. Um, I'm just like, but if I don't, like, I don't want the after effects of not saying something. And again, I'm an advocate for them. And so I'm like, excuse me one second. And they'd be like, what the, and I'm like, that, I don't think this works, you know, or I'm like, I don't think we should, we should say that. And then, you know, they're just like, well, you know, why do you think that? And I have to stand on it. And if you continue on, I did my part, I'm in the room for a reason, you yeah. know? And then, you know, if the artist is like, you know, KJ, I don't see it like that. I'm like, but I'll let you know. I just wanted to tell you yeah, yeah. that's a perspective. But if you feel differently, like I'm- Yeah, I, I, there's a peace of mind internally with you. Yeah. Just, yeah, I'm like, I did my part, you know? And so I remember being on separate, you know, from that, but like, emboldening myself in the moments. Um, I remember where, when we were like on a set, we were doing a commercial, like I try not to say the names, but it was Elton John, it was Lil Nas. Just gonna put it out there. There you go. It was great. And you know, again, most times people are like, what is she doing here? You know, like a director is like, why do I need a performance director? Or, um, you know, everybody has their role and I always respect everybody's role. I don't get that back a lot of times, but you know, I'm like, this ain't personal. You don't know me well enough for it to be personal. So this yeah, is just if your they stuff. Did, they would respect it. Come on. I'm like, so. I'm that's a, the only thing. It's like, oh, you just, no. Nah. That's all right, but you, mm, I'm gonna be here though. And so I remember um, I had like given Lil Nas like a note and then Elton was like well you know what do I do next and I was like well I mean I had watched it enough and I was like well what happens is you'll do da, da, da. and then somebody came out and they put their arm out and they said you're great but I'm directing him and I was like oh Kiana how's your heart how you feeling are you just embarrassed or you really like feel like that was you know, like too much, you know, okay, all right, but you can step back, but don't step out. Yeah. All right, let them do the thing. So then it happened again. And I was like, hey, so-and-so's looking for you. 
and they came over and then, you know, his response to what they said, you know, wasn't like, you know, favorable, but I was like, looks like we've all been humbled. It's cool, you know? <laughs> and I didn't, I didn't know if, you know, maybe Elton had seen what was happening. He was like, I got you girl, yeah, yeah. you know? And so um, in that moment, like, you know, it could have been like this embarrassing uh, time. It could have sent me saying, you know, well, I'm just gonna only be siloed and, and focus on Lil Nas and not look at the big picture of, of what he's a part of. And and I remember, um, you know, feeling like I was probably in the way to some people, but I'm like, mm-mm, but I don't work for y'all. Yeah, exactly. So I'm okay if you feel I'm, that way. I'm gonna, be, they, I'm gonna I'm be right here. here. Yeah. And um, at this point, I think I was still regarding myself as a performance coach, you know, cause in this business, um, you know, I do have the Franks and, and um, and a lot of other performance directors and, and choreographers, but it's not corporate where you know when you get this title, this is the money that comes with that. There's not a scale in that yeah. way. Your scale is based on your experience. You you do your own bumps. How do you know when somebody's like, that bump is too much, we'll take somebody else, you know? So it's a it's a constant like Being back an and artist. forth. Right. And so I was like, um, so the the man in the room, we don't have to say what it is. He said, um, all right. I think he finally acquiesced. And he saw I wasn't going anywhere. And he was like, all right, can we get KJ an Apple box? You know, my co-director, co-apprentice. Um, and I was like, oh my God, I am a director. I was like, he said it. That's when I promoted myself. He let it go. He, he was willing to like. I was like, because so if he, you really understand why I'm here, I will make your job easy. Easier. No. I, I have studied this man. You know, I, have, I know when you're pushing too much and I know when you're about to lose him. And I know when we're about to walk off. You know, and so I'm like, I'm here to serve everybody that's in the room. And when I, we've had moments where the the team was like, you know, what do you think about this? And I'm like, ah, I don't think that's a good idea because that's too on the nose. That's not how this artist moves. And then they overrode me. And they were like, so we're gonna need you to do this. <laughs> and then I watched the artist walk off. And I'm like, yeah, guys, I'll be back. And I was like, I knew this was gonna happen. You know, so it's like, and then afterwards, they're like, thank you so much for your presence in the room. And, and again, I respect everybody's role, but down to like morals, down to knowing how I know they want to be seen. Yeah. I just I've always got to speak up. When you get home at night, do you just literally decompress like immediately take a bath or a shower and just let it? <laughs> no, I'll be like, everybody make some noise. And there don't be nobody there. I'll be like, oh shit. Then I said, my friend and I, we talk about this all the time, how when you come off stage, there is, st and that's There's a stage that for me. Yeah, still it's that still that high. And, you know, whether, you know, I just go to dinner with friends or whether I'm at home or, you know, it is this like, and then I probably get sad initially because I'm like, it's a couple of things. Who can I tell? I call my mama. Yeah. Right. Okay. But I'm like, I can't tell anybody. All right. So I just sit in it for a second. And and I remember like I was dating somebody at the time and they picked me up from uh, a thing that I had done. And I didn't really know it was going to come out like this. And I was like, I was in the car. I was like, yeah, yeah. And we're going to go eat. I was like, do you want me to be your woman or what? And just I was like, you, just, oh my just. God. I, he was like, where did this come from? And he almost like went into the ditch. <laughs> and I, I was like, I don't know, but. That's part of me. Yeah, He's yeah, like, I mean, yeah, I like yeah, yeah. it. I like it. And I'm like, well, what are we doing? And so, you know, where times I could be a little bit more like, let me just see where this goes. I'm going to sit back in the cut. I'm going to, you know, appreciate just the presence of time. In this moment, I was hyped. I had not come down yet. So, I like yeah, that. I don't, I should do more of that, like relaxing and sitting, you know, like well, move. Should, yeah. I could. Movement, though, is... I, it's just, it has an ability. It doesn't mean that you're not relaxing just because you're moving. For me, yeah, it does. I learned that from my daughter. My if daughter, I'm moving, I'm not relaxed, though. If you're moving, you're not if relaxed. If I'm moving. Okay, well, it's personal. It is personal. My daughter told me that she, rest looks very different. Oh. To her. Come on. My, you know, she was seven when she said that. Rest looks different for her. Yeah. I'm trying to figure out what rest is for me. Like I've seen the effects of just sitting down 
been scrolling. I was like, I don't think this is rest. Okay, put it down. And then this is quiet. And then I think I would end up crying. And I think maybe sometimes it's just like feelings that are just waiting to get out, but you won't give it a chance. Yeah. You won't shut up. You won't stop wrong. moving. And then it feels like a weight is lifted. I'm like, that's what I was feeling. And it's better on your body. It's better. Yeah, I think, you know, we have this idea of what rest is supposed to look like, but the core of it is when you're resting, you're supposed to recharge. And for some people to recharge is doing something yeah. that is therapeutic, lethargic, whatever it may, I mean, whatever, whatever it is in regards to self. Yeah. This is why I like having a self-understanding, a self-awareness of what do I need? Right. What do I need to be able to do that actually feeds me and mm -hmm. recharges me? Yeah. It's very personal. As I said, for some people, it's not, it doesn't look, my rest is very different from other people's rest. So my daughter telling me, like, Daddy, when I'm playing with my toys, I am resting. Mm. I had this idea because she doesn't sleep in the same manner. She's right. a night owl, and she is very much an artist in all. Ugh. Yeah. <laughs> so she moves differently. Yeah. And, you know, we, as parents, we think like, oh, okay, she's supposed to do this, blah, 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 blah. And it's, yeah, so sometimes it makes my life a little mm. more difficult. Right. Because I have a way to want to fit things in my parameter. But it's like, no, I have to honor this. And in relation to it, it's like, oh. So in the moments where I've wanted to honor my stuff and somebody else might have said, well, no, you need to do it this way. It's like, no, she's doing this. She's telling me the same thing. So it's like, no, you wanted that as well. Yeah. So honor that aspect of rest looks however, yeah. you know. Okay, since you've said that, um, some of the other, one of the other things that I do or that I did yeah, after tell me like all that the, shoot. Tell me the real shit. No, no. <laughs> I'll tell you what I want to do. I want to have crab legs. That is my happy place. I don't know if it is the cracking of, is if that's releasing well, my frustration. Good. That's why I mean, crab it. legs. That's I can sit the at language, the but. bar by myself. It is not a team sport. <laughs> All right, I'm out. That is what I'm like. You know what you deserve. Not a team sport. Mm -mm. You know what you deserve. Some crab legs, and that's one of my decompressing things. I like that. Oh man, that is. Well, listen, crab legs are good. So <laughs> yes. if you're gonna if, if you're gonna decompress with that, yeah. Yeah, I wonder if it's because of physical activity. It's not just, especially when you said because rest looks different because you're on. I wonder if it is just the physical. It's that, but it's good. I mean, because I'm a pro at it's it, so I, it's not a yeah, lot of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's good. It's like I feel like I deserve this. Like I, I used to, whenever I would uh, make good marks on my report card, we would go to Red Lobster. So like since I was five, I was that was my treat. Oh, I like yeah, Red Lobster. What do you mean? We go Red, like, Red crab Lobster. Legs. Definitely was the celebration. My God, the celebration spot. I was like, you have won today. So now I think I didn't even think of that subconsciously. You know, beyond just them being good, but it is how I reward myself. Yeah, but there's a there's the you could say I like being fed. There's a, I, you know, I'm not, I don't like to analyze stuff, but right. I do to some degree because I really do think that. The act that you just said is a really important because there's still a there's a personal connection with it. Yeah. That you want to be involved. It's not like you said, no, I just like somebody to cook me a meal and I don't I want to be hands off. No, it's like, no, no, no. I want to enjoy something that I love, mm -hmm. but I still want to be a part of it and engaged in that. But That's you know I what? It. I think now thinking of it um, and the way that you say it, I'm not talking to anybody. Yeah. OK. It's just me and the crab. Yeah. And I'm thinking about what just happened and what are my takeaways? What could I have done better? It's not like going back and forth answering the question. It's, yeah, 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 yeah. it's me and, and myself in this and freaking 12 pound. I was playing. <laughs> <But yeah. laughs> All right. Okay. We have, uh, I'd like to, towards the end, I, there's okay. a few questions that I ask. And this is more of the speaking to the power of the guest. And this is where I speak to more of the, I guess, ex existential aspect of how you see the world and yourself. And so it usually starts with, with everything that you do, clearly, you, you help so many individuals and you help them see their own power, you help them embrace it, you help them yeah. walk with it, you help them change it in moments where they need to, you help them transform it. So with that, where would you say that you're the wisest. Where does your wisdom lie? 
So you basically have to big up yourself in mm. this, you know, talk about being presumptuous. Yes, mm -hmm. I want you to be as honestly presumptuous as you possibly can. Right. My wisdom lies in knowing that I was qualified to do this at birth, that energy is my force, that it can't be negotiated. You can't hijack it. We can go toe to toe. I'm always going to win. Um, I, Man, I love that. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> That's one of the best answers that I've had. Oh, man. Keep going. <laughs> That's where my wisdom lies. I think, you know, I always said, God, I was like, I want to, I want to like do something that I know I'm the best at, you know, and yes, there are other best, but I know I'm the best at what I do because I'm accessing the best of, of what I've experienced in life. I'm bringing in and activating every, everything from, you know, being on stage with Janet Jackson to being on stage with Justin Timberlake and Britney Spears and Carl Thomas and, you know, from coaching the Lumineers to Erica Campbell and like to know that it transcends genres yeah. and it transcends mediums and I can be on stage with an Amazon and then be on stage with a Google yeah. and then be on stage with a little TJ. Like I love yeah, not limited the to. variation. There's yeah. No limitation in this. Because really I just help to change hearts at the end of the day. You know, it's like I reintroduce you to your own dopeness, like you already have it. And so um, it is, it is a, an instant gratification when you can see how someone moves differently because of your perspective shared yeah. with them and then their like regurgitation of it, their own interpretation of it. They move differently. I'm like, what we doing? Why? You know, you already win it, you know, and then see them like, yeah, yeah, right. One more time. And I remember like my, f tell me if we need to stop, but no, I just got good. excited. So I was on set with, um, it was a, uh, a video shoot. It was like Fabio, Lil TJ, Polo G. Uh -huh. and, and you know, it's always interesting because, you know, everybody's got their team. They got three different perspectives on how they want to perform. They want to be cool. And I was late because I ended up that day doing a speaking engagement for Sony. And so normally I like to get there before they get on set so we can have our one-on-one, -on -one, but I couldn't. And I was just like, you know, waiting for people to introduce me to the artists and so they'll know why I'm there and 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 that really wasn't happening quick enough. And so they would do these takes and whenever they would yell cut, I remember one time I went into little TJ and I was like, um, so whose video is this? And he was like, it's mine. I said, I can't tell. Then I walked away. It was quiet. Nobody else heard it because nobody wants to be put on the spot. Yeah, yeah, nobody yeah, yeah. wants to be uh, yeah. played in front of me. Nobody wants to be corrected or given that type of advice. And I was like, cool. And I walked away. And then they yell cut again. I went over to five year. I was like, yo, every time you grunt, I'm like, it has so much power, but you're wasting it. And he was like, hi. Right. And he walked back. Cause they'd be like, where does she come yeah, from? Be like, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> and then, you know, and then like Polo G, I whispered something to him like, yo, you know, if you, if, if you can't see us, we can't see you. Like, I want you to be present in this thing. I want, and so afterwards, you know, they, they uh, perform differently. And so now it's just me, I'm on the side. And like, I just, the idea that I was involved in something and they didn't get the best that they could have gotten because I was either like embarrassed to yell in the mix of all these people, um, like I, it, I can't do it. Yeah. And so I remember I'm off on the side. You would have left and felt a particular type My of way God, like, what, who are you? Why are you even saying yeah. nothing? And so I'm on the side and now I'm yelling. I'm like, let's go. You got this. And I'm going full steam. So much so that the director or the um, assistant director started also encouraging. Yeah. And then everybody around was like, yeah, keep your head up. Da, 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 da. And I'm, yeah, I mean, I should have had like a bullhorn. And I'm doing it. And Lil TJ posted on his social, cause somebody had captured me doing this, that if you ain't got no hype man like this, if your friends don't hype you up like this, your people don't, get rid of them. Word. And so I was like, did your job, mission was accomplished. 
And so it was just, it was very, you know, methodical and strategic because it's based on people. It's not like I'm just like, you should do it this way and then you should yeah, move no, to the so left. You're just paying attention. You're just in, in, in tapped in and tuned. And that's you the work people yeah. they don't see or they don't consider. Got to pay attention. I'm like, these boys don't want to be corrected, you know, especially by no girl coming in here and not, they don't want to do it in front of each other. So I would just be like, so real quick. Oh. No, that's, listen, there's a, <laughs> there's a magic in that. And that's a skill, a major skill to be able to. So yeah, I said you're wise in that. All right, I'm with that. <laughs> um, you know, you spoke so much about your process in relation to like why, but what's an aspect of your process that you see it needs to be developed? It needs to be worked on. Mm. You know, we're saying, what, what do you got to work on? What do I have to work on? That's why you asked him what he has, um, Messi. Yes, yeah. Messi. Uh -huh. um, I need to work on um, not taking things to heart. I need to work on um, being consistent. And um, not how I work with others, but how I pull that same energy into the work I do for yeah, me. Yeah, yeah. I could be more consistent. Are you doing more for others and than I, you're doing for yourself? Yeah, and I could yeah. stop procrastinating and I could execute quicker. I know when I have an idea, um, there's sometimes I'm like, I just got to get it out. And then the other times I sit on it and I, I hate wasting moments. So then I become very upset okay, with myself. Okay. Huh. And this last question is in reference to we, we start off and we go through this process of this conversation. And hopefully within this conversation, you have uh, learned a little bit more about yourself. I clearly have mm -hmm. in relation to your answers. But I asked you what you do and how and you're clearly passionate and you love what you do and, and embodies who you are. But I asked the question, who are you? Mm hmm. I am a compassionate, uh, sensitive, um, dark-skinned girl who used to have stage fright, that used to hate, you know, not getting the boys because she was dark-skinned, that found confidence in, in the beauty and could finally say it, I see it, that didn't have to come from other people to know that um, while there were some people that saw something in me and I had to wait for my own confidence to, to build up, now when people see it, they're not telling me anything I don't already know. Right. I'm, I'm thankful that it, it, um, it resonates with them. Um, I am someone that hates uh, injustice, unfairness. Um, I am a dancer. Like, I love house music. It activates me. Um, Chicago, so I think sense. I'm a rapper. <laughs> My brother don't think I'm a rapper, <laughs> but I think I'm a rapper. Um, I am energetic. I come with passion. I obliterate the stages that I cross. I leave the rooms better. I am an uplifter. I, someone else said this and I've owned it. They said, KJ is an important stop on the route to stardom. You know, and maybe back in the day, you know, the humility would be like, oh my God, yes. Yes. I am now like owning um, that moment. I'm not wasting no moments. I'm raising moments. Um, I am a problem. There we go. I don't know where that came from, but yeah. I'm Sylvia's baby. Shout out to, uh, you know, that was Tyler. Uh, oh, how was I thinking? Um, uh, Tyler Perry's, he said Maxine's baby. I'm Sylvia's <laughs> baby. Um, I love, love, you know, it's Libras. <laughs> I love, love. Uh, I will probably indict myself before I indict you. I want to see what I could have done differently. Yeah. Um, uh, I am fair. I am liked. If you don't like me, it's probably on you because I've done all I could. Mm -hmm. I am special. 
and I'm God's child, his favorite. I mean, we could say one of his favorite, but I know. <laughs> I'm his favorite, and I have not been forgotten. That I, I will say I'm not, I've not been forgotten. None of my, none of my moments, none of my encounters, good or bad, have gone to waste. So I am proud of me. There you go. Thank you for that. Thank you for having me. Last question, really important in relation to, you're in a career of service and you help others. Is there yeah. any, just that just comes to your heart, more your heart than your mind in relation to advice that you give towards individuals and I'm saying individuals that look like you. When I say look like you, I don't mean necessarily just physically. Mm -hmm. That look like you energetically, that look like you demographically, that look like you artistically, that feel like you artistically, that look like you physically, that all, all everything encompassing because who you are is not just a black woman from South Side of Chicago. Right. You're so much more than that. So. I don't want people to feel disconnected in relating to you in those that are, might not be that or even those that yeah. are that. Yeah. We're going to go to the book. Bam, bam. There we go. Okay. So I've created some seeds of victory. And um, so I'll go down. One is don't outsource your win. Pre-approve yourself. I remember Devon Franklin when I was trying to figure out. I was like, I'm a. He was like, you know, what do you do? I was like, I'm a host. I'm a singer. I'm an actor. Eh, eh. And he was like, well, how would somebody know when to call you? And I was like, huh. And then that's when I honed in on the performance direction. And he was like, you know, and I'm. I was like, I'm trying to figure out when I should move to LA or how I should do it. And he was like, if God told you to move, then you move. Don't outsource your faith. And that's where this came from. Pre-approving yourself. We wait for everybody else to give the yes before we say yes. Don't wait to access the energy in the room. Bring your own. Show up and be present. No one can show up for you and no one can show up like you. Nobody's ever really looking for me, okay? But showing up has gotten me 75% of my jobs. All right, moving on. Identify and abide in your force. Figure out that thing that you were born with that nobody, it didn't even have, even if they have commentary on it, it won't change it because it's in you, it's part of you. No matter what, make it count. Your point of view, your delivery, your space, your gift. Uh, enter every room knowing that you are the solution. You are the yes, you already won. You're offering a part of the win. Don't dismiss anyone. Um, stay open. And one um, that's not on here is go back and get the unclaimed wins. Because I think we win on so many levels that unless it's, you know, being mentioned on, you know, in the media circuit or yeah, no, unless it's that, that, being take written, take yeah. all, take everything with your name on it that you've done. Like make your moment bigger than the moment. You are the moment. And I think I had to go back and say, yeah, I forgot I did that. That's part of me kind of emboldening, emboldening and fueling myself like, oh, I forgot you did that. Yeah. And even if nobody mentioned it, you know what it took for you to do that. You know what the win was. Um, and then finally, God does not call the qualified. He qualifies the called. Believe that. Boom. Boom. First Corinthians 1, 27 through 29. Bam. <laughs> It's been said. <laughs> the Rose Effect. The Rose Effect. All the right. Rose effect. The 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 Rose Effect. Thank you. Thank you, Ryan. This Thank was you. great. So, yeah, I hope uh, I hope you enjoyed this, and um, I'm super grateful, and I know that a lot of people will uh, appreciate this. Yeah. And hopefully you you get more phone calls. Hey man. Yeah, you've I've declared things on on here that I've not declared to myself before. I've not said out loud. I believe them. Oh, I, 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 I I'm I'm grateful for that. Yeah. I believe them, but I was too afraid to yeah. say it aloud based on what I what other people would think about it. And I think it's such a freeing, liberating space to say if you don't see anything other than than love from it and, and me um, embracing myself, 
then I'm not for you. All right. Thank you to everybody in your world, in our world, that has allowed us to come to this space for you to feel comfortable to do that because that's that's big time. With Amen. that said, oh, how do people get in contact with you? Yes. That's, uh, I always fuck that up. All right. You can get in contact with KJ Rose. First, you can look at season two of The Black Hamptons, BZ Plus, Family Business, Netflix. Also, my book, uh, The Rose Effect, Eight Steps to Delivering the Performance of Your Life is available on Amazon and Barnes and Nobles, anywhere you get your books. It's also an audible. I did an audio book, all right? Don't forget. And then um, IG, KJ Rose Effect, uh, Twitter the same, and LinkedIn, K Kiana KJ Rose Henson. You are the real deal. Man, light reflects light. Thank My you. Brother. I appreciate that. Thank you for having With me. With that being said, um, welcome to Profits and Process. Welcome appreciate y'all. We out. Wow. So many chills. <laughs>